Hey, buddy, Thomas here. Monumentous occasion here on the Timber King Sawmill. 400.5 hours, so I'm gonna call that 400 hours. This is a 400 hour review, if you will. Mill's been great, and we're gonna cut up a cedar log on here. Kind of a gnarly cedar log. This actually came out of Florida a few years back during the hurricane, Michael? When it hit uh, Panama City area, I believe it was. Yeah, Panama City and uh, Apalachicola area that got really wiped out uh, there in Florida. But this is gonna be the 400 hour review. I love this sawmill. The greatest sawmill I have ever owned. Now my dad and I also own a Timber King 2220. Love that sawmill as well. But for what I do, this is the perfect all round sawmill. It'll cut 21 foot long. So you can see 21 foot all the way to the end here. In fact, it'll cut a little bit beyond that. Um, if you can get a log on there, I think you can get like 21 foot three or four inches. I don't remember exactly, but really you can handle a 21 foot long log. I've done that on a few occasions. I think I've cut 21 two is like the longest I've cut on here, but you have to have everything completely maxed out. Max width the cut, 35 inches. The newer model, the 2020, will do 38. But for all intents and purposes, this is a 2019. This is the model right before they came out with the 2020. But I have all the same kind of features uh, that the 2020 has, with the exception of I don't cut 38 wide, I only cut 35 wide. But anyways, long story short, uh, fantastic mill. Uh, I've only had a few little issues here and there. Uh, the clutch bolt, I did a video on that. My clutch bolt uh, kind of came loose on me, but that's something you're supposed to check every so often. Uh, and then I went in and actually added a few washers to it and some Loctite, so no issue there. I've also had a few little issues with like this bearing right here, this, this guide bearing. It has the seal essentially is gone because I was over pressurizing it with uh, grease. Um, but I continue to add grease to it. I have new seals, but the mill is running fantastic. It has been for the past few months, so I have not changed it out yet. That will be something I'll do when it's a, a miserable day and I got nothing better to do and I don't need to cut logs. The, I'm trying to think what else. Engine's been great. I've got the diesel option. I'm a big proponent, big fan of the diesel options. The diesel options allow you more fuel efficiency, longer engine life, more torque, lower RPMs. It's just, in my opinion, I'm a diesel head, so I, I, anything diesel I love. This has got a Kubota V1505D uh, engine. It's a four-cylinder engine. I have nothing but great things to say about this. The older model of this actually, I believe it was a 32 horse or 30-something 30, 30 horse. It's the same exact engine, but this one, due to emissions controls and stuff like that, has been detuned. All, essentially all they're doing though is they're running just a little bit lower RPM. I think this one's topping out at like 22, 2300 RPM vice 2600 RPM like my buddy's is running because I got a buddy who's got the exact same one and I can, I can tell no differences between the two. In fact, where I'm operating in a torque fan on this one is actually better at lower RPMs and my buddy who's got the gas engine, he's got the 38 horse gas engine on his, uh, I can outsaw him uh, because this thing's got the torque. On his engine, if he's cutting a, a wide log, he says it feels like he's always trying to catch up to the RPMs, whereas this one right here, uh, you, you get into the log and she just powers through because you've got all that torque. Uh, the blade speed uh, is, you know, compared to my dad's mill, the blade speed seems to be cutting a little bit slower on this one. However, again, I'm operating that uh, lower to torque band there, uh, or excuse me, lower RPM range, which is higher on the torque. The uh, other few little things I've had these chains so these chains right here um, if you have a, a, a violent movement if you will if you are moving the saw head back and forth quickly and everything you can cause it to jump a link and I've done some videos on that too every once in a while you get your timing of your chain a little bit out of uh, sequence we go and turn this off I was just trying to warm her up I'll go and turn her off right now but um You'll, you'll jump a chain link every so often if you have a violent movement. Really just go up there, you you loosen up down here or 
remove the actual nut here so it gives you free play on the chain and then you move your link up there the actual chain over the link forward or back based on how far it's it's, it's leading and i've done some videos on that and i'll have some other videos in the future but really all you do you have a nice little thing here with the stops which are your your lights and everything i bring the saw head all the way back and measure on both sides off this plate and that'll tell me if my timing of the chain is off uh, also recently i did have an issue where i had sawdust get into my fuel tank which clogged up my fuel filter uh, we have inline fuel filters which is really nice which goes to a fuel pump which then goes up and over and then you actually have a fuel filter on the sawmill itself uh, all the parts are pretty easy to get a hold of i've had no issue going to um what do you call it AutoZone or o'reilly's or whatever to get the parts i need so that's pretty nice i think i'm on my third inline fuel filter in fact here's the old one right here and you can see whew, there's some nasty crap in there but these things work and they keep your your mill going well in fact this right here these are the bearings uh for my guide rollers i just have not installed those um <clears throat> i really have nothing bad to say about the sawmill it has been an absolute trooper 400 hours into it uh, I've had no issues with the engine whatsoever. It, she is just a powerhouse in my opinion. And as you can see, it's that Kubota V1505D. Time-tested, phenomenal engine. Um, another thing, blade blow-ups do happen. They happen a lot if you're pushing your blade hard. <laughs> right now, you can see I've blown out uh, one of these metal arms here. My box right here has come off just a little bit just from blade blow-ups. But that's why you have this metal cage around here because when a blade blows up, it won't really blow up forward or back. It's going to blow up in the direction that the blade's turning. So you'll hit the sides of your wall here a lot. And then every once in a while, you'll get like a, a little bulge just like this right here. So you can see where the blade actually hit here and pulled the metal out. I'm going to eventually push that in there and actually you can see little divots right there from blade impact so the, the box does its job <laughs> it's been pretty awesome uh the sawmill energy chain has done great um you do get a little bit of build up right here underneath kind of where you're exhausted and that's from coming off the blade uh, you'll get some sawdust build up in there but really no issue i clean it off every so often um, I just feel like with all the sawdust here, especially during the summertime, you'll get a lot of heat built up because you've got your hydraulic hoses going here. Hydraulic hoses on this thing, I've had no issues, <clears throat> knock on wood. Um, but all throughout, they have these nice fittings. They're not full length hoses. They actually have fittings on each of the hoses here as well as over here. So if you have issues, there's I think there's like three segments on each one so if you have issues you have three parts so if you have a leak on one or you blow out a hose or something like that you're not replacing the entire 36 feet you're replacing only a section of that that's the actual suspect area so that's not a bad thing i like that um earlier options i don't think they did that but now they they do that and it's, it's really you know taking in mind the customer's you know responses to like hey can you can you not have the full length so we're not replacing you know, a couple hundred dollar hose, a smaller hose would be nice. So they, they really do listen to the customers at Timber King, which I really, really like. A log turner. Absolutely love this log turner. In fact, I had a guy come out here the other day. He's got a 1600 mil. He's going to try to fabricate that for himself. If you watch any of my videos, this thing just the other day, now that's a live oak log there. That's, that's actually over, over 4,000 pounds. But just this last week, I handled three logs. They were oak logs, 12 foot long. 28 inches in diameter and we're talking about like you know 4,000 pound logs no issues handling them whatsoever again if you follow my channel my favorite thing other than the computer are these vertical stops right here vertical log stops in my opinion are the greatest thing since sliced bread on a bandsaw mill I will never ever again go to sweeping stops I hate sweeping stops this right here is the winner hands down the best option and Timber King is one of the few companies that's 
you know, on their 2000 or 2020 mil and above or 2000 mil and above, they come standard. Uh, I, I don't think you see that except for on the Baker and then on the high end version of like the wood misers and stuff like that. But love that best thing ever. Uh, the loading arms, I use them very rarely, but if I do get a log where I can't lift up with my tractor, um, these loading arms will lift like 5,000 pounds. And I have used that. If you check out, I think the largest pine log to date, I put a 20 foot long pine log on here that was, I don't know, 30 inches in diameter. And it loads it up no problem. I don't use them very often, but they're when I do, they are pretty nice to have. The tow boards, I like this style of tow boards. My dad actually has the newer one uh, on the 2220 and they're huge and in my opinion they, they kind of get in the way a little bit because they're further back from those bunks and like on a log like this where i have this knot section it'll hit on mine a little bit that would really hit on my dad's um i like this tucked in design a whole lot on this model uh the log dog absolutely amazing tool uh going in and out and also whenever i have a cant that's not quite squared up on my log stops i will use that uh, to kind of square up my cant. So I don't really take, I don't take the time to square up my log stops all the time. I have some buddies who are like very anal about that stuff. Um, I will get it very close to just using an eye in my log um, dog here. That log dog goes up and down as well as in and out hydraulically and you can twist, bend, whatever, anything you need to. And in some weird situations, um, you can also turn a log with it. The other thing, now one thing I'll say about here, you can kind of see that, that bolt down there. There's a bolt there. There's actually four bolts that hold the log dog assembly onto the machine. Those four bolts, because it does do a lot of movement up and down and back and forth, they get torqued a whole lot and they're not really long. Over time, they will back out. So that's a check you have to do quite regularly to make sure that you're not going to, um, you know, lose a nut or a bolt. My buddy actually has lost a bolt off of his because it is under constant torque in every which direction the head up and down is awesome you've got our hydraulic ram assembly inside of here and you've got these sprockets and chains and stuff like that over time these chains will stretch it's not a whole lot but if you if you travel a whole lot with your mill and there's a lot of bouncing up and down on the road those will stretch you want to make sure you're checking your level off the deck every so often done a few videos on that especially in a brand new mill you can easily get some stretch out of those so just something you check every so often um, you know make sure your mills all leveled out measure off, measure off the deck at your lowest position and then you want to make your lowest position one inch unless you want to cut something less but then you go ahead and set home on the computer the computer on this thing again i'll put links to videos on that as well but the computer on this mill oh my goodness what a time saver absolutely love this thing greatest thing since sliced bread along with the uh the vertical log stops this thing's amazing you can cut from measuring from the top down measuring from the bottom up if you're measuring from the bottom up it's in this way very normal measuring from the top down you go to alt 2 mode pretty amazing i've done some videos on that as well very awesome you have some presets you can set you can cycle through them in here you can change them in here this that and the other or when you're in your main screen right here, just left or right goes to whatever presets <clears throat> that you have. Very big fan of this. Literally makes cutting a dream. You don't have to do a lot of thinking. Uh, the drag back system, I have the drag back system on this mill. You can see these little arms right here. I've used it like once. I don't use it. <laughs> and I'm not set up in my current operation for that. As you can see, I've got a wall of wood here and a wall. So it doesn't really work for me. My buddy Jack does use his on his mill, um, but really he can outperform any hand he has on the sawmill pulling boards off that. If he's cutting like two by 12s oak or something like that at say 16 foot long or something like that, his, it'll bring him back and everything, but his, his handler that he has has a hard time keeping up with him on the mill. Um, they are awesome and it'd be really good if you had like a, a roller system or you know maybe two people off off handling uh these these boards and everything but all right i've talked enough and i'll go ahead and cut this log up It'll be a lot of i'll do a few real-time cuts we'll do a lot of time lapse or anything we're just gonna get some slabs for some tables and stuff out of this um and then i'll do my final thoughts at the end and also big surprise um, i'm gonna have this mill up for sale we're moving to wisconsin soon and looking at the timeline and everything i i, I 
I'm not sure if I'm going to sell it down here, if I'm going to sell it when I get to Wisconsin or whatever. I'm not sure yet, but we're going to sell this mill because I have another one on order. And uh, people are probably thinking I'm crazy, but there is logic behind it and everything. But I, I think we're selling this mill. Um, I love this mill. Hands down, the best mill I've ever owned. Um, but, uh, yeah, for logistics reasons, I think we may be selling this mill here soon. So, anyways, let's go ahead and get to cutting, and then uh, we'll see what this log yields. And then we'll talk some more about the sawmill. Stay tuned. All right, so we've got everything set up now. We're going to go ahead take a little bit off the top, just take these knots off and everything, and we're going to turn that log, sorry, dogs and kids, we're going to turn that log to where this nasty section right here is facing down. That should give me a nice flat section to work with, and then we'll start slabbing from the top, get our reference edge, and then flip it back over, and then cut off a lot of this nasty stuff. Try to maximize the max width cuts we can, and then this is going to be a lot of epoxy stuff. This thing is riddled with doting if you want to call it or whatever the soft spots are in cedar so here we go time lapse sit back and enjoy maybe i'll choose some good music and we'll see you I'm gonna go ahead and do a few real-time cuts. We are cutting this at an inch and five-eighths because it's cedar and cedar is very dimensionally sound. Very, very little movement out of this. Very impressed with the boards thus far. Um, I just have nothing bad to really say about cedar other than uh, it will get to my sinuses over time, so I don't like to cut a whole lot of cedar in one sitting, but uh, this log right here has been something that's been needed to cut for a while, so let me do a few real-time cuts. I'll do like two or three and then we'll go ahead and do some more hyperlapse and then we'll do our final thoughts on this amazing sawmill i can already tell you i'm very much impressed with this sawmill hence the reason i've owned multiple sawmills i've had seven sawmills uh three of them have no four of them have been timber kings and hands down uh, best company for customer service best product for ease of use ease of maintenance ease of repair and availability of parts very big thing there are some other mill companies out there i really do like but uh there are some parts that are proprietary to them and very difficult to find so all right enough of that let's go ahead and get to come get to cut
Okay, so while I take these off, I'm going to talk about kind of like what I love about this mill. I'm going to go ahead and change the angle of the camera so we can see these slabs as they come off as well. All right, so Timber King sawmills, one of the things that really drove me towards them is they are fully hydraulic mills on their, on their larger mills. And a fully hydraulic mill that is direct hydraulics. There are no solenoid control valves or anything like that for the actual operation of the uh, mill. With the exception of the computer system, there is a valve that opens it up and closes with solenoids and everything. But for the most part, I mean, you are direct drive when you're using the handles. That's kind of a nasty slab, but your direct drive uh, when you use these handles and everything uh, connected to the sawmill. So very, very smooth operation. That's going to be an epoxy fill. With that, it just makes you feel a lot more in control of the mill. You're not, you know, jerking around and, and going crazy on the controls and stuff like that. It's a very smooth, fluid movement. I love that. I've run some other mills before that are great mills, but it's controlled through a whole lot of solenoid control valves, and, and it's kind of jerky. I don't like that. Pretty boards. I like those. Those would be perfect for epoxy. Now we're actually getting into the good stuff where there's not any uh, holes and stuff like that. But the computer system on this mill is also amazing. So each of those cuts, if we go back and measure them, will be exactly inch and five eighths. Now it's exactly inch and five eighths if your machine is dialed in. And currently I've got the machine pretty well dialed in. I measure it probably not as often as I should. I probably about every month to two months i would go through and check level recently we had a situation where the log that i had on there the cant would be not quite touching on this bunk but it was touching every other bunk which means that my back end of the sawmill here uh, wasn't leveled out and that happened because i was dropping some large logs on there and i corrected that issue and actually what it was is the board that i had underneath there had sunk in into the ground when it got wet or something like that and, and bowed on me but I went through and corrected the issue. I like to put these cross members across. As you see where my jack stands are on, that's a two by eight or so. Each one of them have a, a two by, and I think on the back I actually have a two and a half by. Anyways, long story short, as long as your mill is leveled out and everything, and you check the level of your blade, and your guides are pushing down properly. Now my guide on the left hand side, this side right here, is not actually touching that much. But the mill is cutting like a champ, and I don't want to change anything. So I guess that's kind of a bad mentality to have. But if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And if I'm cutting perfect, I don't want to adjust anything. I want to go ahead and get these last few jobs I have done and these last few logs I have cut up before I adjust that. I'll be adjusting that here in another video shortly. And I'll set to change out that bearing itself, which I have those and just haven't got around to doing it. But you want about an eighth of an inch deflection with those guide rollers off of the uh, belt or the drive wheels and the idler wheel uh, that your belts ride on. Belts, a lot of discussion on belts. Uh, I run a B57 belt. It's got a little bit of slop in it, which I like that because I can take it on and off by hand without having to cut it off. B56 belts work great too, but they're kind of hard for one person to get on there. When we put them on my buddy's mill, sometimes he's like, hey, I'm putting my belts on. Can you help me come over? It's literally, a, it's a pain to get on, and I've had no issue with the B57 belts, and I've run all type. I've run the Continental ones. I've run the Goodyear ones. The browning ones and the gates yes gates everyone swears that gates are the worst i think i have gates on here right now i'm not gonna lie they probably have like 200 something hours on them i've had no issue <laughs> um so i guess that's and well the other thing is always making sure that you detension your blade after each use so if i'm done for the day i will detension that or even if i go in for lunch i'll detension that blade take that pressure off pressure right now i'm running about uh, 1100 psi i don't really go above that Sometimes I do, but it's very rare that I might go up to 1200 PSI, but for the most part, 1100 PSI works great for me. Uh, I know some people that run a little bit less, and I know a lot of people that run a lot more, but 1100 PSI has been working great for me, and I cut everything from the hardest yellow pine, the longleaf pine, to large oak, to whatever, hickory, pecan. As you can see, my log yard's getting a lot less. I literally just have just a few piles over there, and then this last little job right here I gotta do for a guy and then I'm pretty much done 
Uh, my dad's been out here helping me clean out all this stuff here. It's a good feeling. We're getting close to moving, and therefore, uh, we've got to get rid of all these logs. But I want to make sure I went ahead and cut these logs up, and I wanted to show you kind of like the 400-hour kind of review of this thing. But these are pretty. These are epoxy slabs. I mean, there's there's no beating around the bush. When I was younger, I probably would have burned these because they had these holes in it. But those epoxy folks love this, and they do some amazing stuff. Bobby Charles, Zeke, I'm talking to y'all. Y'all do some amazing stuff with this. So come on out and buy these slabs. <laughs> um, but now I'm actually getting into the good slabs. So let me take out this last one here. You're going to be impressed by this one, I think. Because I actually forgot I did four cuts, so I'm just not noticing that. This one right here. Yeah, it's a nice one. It's got a little bit of soft, not a whole lot. Everything after this has been perfect, though. <laughs> um, yeah, these are, uh, it's like 24 wide, I think. Let me go ahead and put it over here. Uh, my blades, I'm running Timber King Ultramax blades. Big fan of the Ultramax blades. Folks at Timber King do a great job of getting those out, and I'm very happy with them. Uh, my buddy, Robert, if you see my videos on sharpening, uh, he helps me sharpen the blades or anything too. I sharp my own as well, but when I get backlogged, I send them up to Robert because he does an amazing job. The blade I'm currently running, I think he's been sharpened three times uh, with no issue. Usually you get about five, six sharpenings out of a blade and depends on how you're running the blade and how well you take care of your blades. He does a great job because he cleans up the blades, gets all the gunk off it with a wire brush wheel that he's made. And then he, while he's, let's see, is it setting? No, it's while he's sharpening the blade, he has the blades actually go through like a WD-40 oil bath, if you will. Puts a nice little film on there to prevent any kind of corrosion from occurring. But if you do want your blades to be sharpened, please don't throw them out in the uh, elements. Keep them kind of clean and stuff like that so that the uh, resharpening folks don't have to spend a whole lot of time on it. Plus, it's going to extend the life of your blade. You won't get all that pith, uh, pitting and stuff like that. So I'm going to throw the hyperlapse back on. We're going to show the last little bit of cutting this. Again, that's about, I take that back, that's about 20 to 22 inches wide. Um, and it was cutting through it like butter, as you saw. This diesel engine just keeps on purring through everything. We're going to throw on a hyperlapse, cut these last few slabs up. Then we'll put them all out and give you my final thoughts on this amazing sawmill. Stay tuned. There you have it, folks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And there's actually an eighth slab, which is the Sawyer's cut, in my opinion. <laughs> I saved the slab that I really want to work with. Uh, very beautiful stuff. Again, uh, three or four of these slabs would be perfect for epoxy. And then uh, the rest of these, this would be easy behind the table or behind the sofa type tables or even like a little bar top or something like that. I don't know, just beautiful. Cedar's always a favorite out here. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? And I'll show you my little Sawyer's cut over here. The one I want to work with is this one right here. Boom. That one is beautiful. Sorry about that sun there. That's the one I wanted to work with. That's going to be a little coffee table for our place up in Tennessee, which we're eventually going to turn into an Airbnb um, before we move up to Wisconsin. But yeah, awesome. Beautiful piece. Make that into a coffee table or something like that. Very easy to work. Okay, so. Uh, one of the things that we have going on, I'm going to show a video of this on our 2220 mil, is this right here. I control my water with a shark bite um, brass valve. Works great and everything. However, on my dad's mill, we have a solenoid control valve, which is actually hooked up to our clutch switch down here. So this one right here, excuse me, that's not the clutch. Clutch is on the other side. Clutch over there. Um, anyways, as we turn the clutch on, uh, then the actual water turns on and it saves a ton of water. Love it. I'm going to do it in this mill. There's also a few other little things we're going to do. Uh, some additions. We're actually looking at putting a laser on here. Uh, I got a buddy from Mule Mountain Sawmill, I believe. Uh, he's a horse dentist. 
or equine dentist, I should say. He does some amazing stuff. Pretty cool dude. Check out his channel. I'll put it in the description below. But he showed how to attach a green laser to a sawmill. He's got a Cooks AC uh, 36 mil. Great mill. Um, it's a very big mill and everything. And he cuts some pretty cool stuff out there in Oklahoma. So big shout out to him out there. Again, link will be in the description below, but we're going to add that laser as well because that's one thing. Doing your first cut is always hard to tell where you're going to come out. You can look down the actual blade. You need to wait till the blade gets nice and flat, and then you kind of figure out where she's at and everything. But it's still something that I've been cutting since 2003, and I will still screw up the first cut and have to come back and do a second cut. It's kind of embarrassing, but it happens. So always go deeper in what you think, unless you get a green laser or a laser you can see down the length of the log. Computer system's awesome. I mean, I've got only good things to say about it. I've got many videos on the operation of that. I'll have some more coming up here soon. Uh, this is the newer system that's on all the the larger mills, the 2020 and above. Um, absolutely love the advanced set works from Timber King. Very well thought out, uh, easy to use system. And if you want to see more videos than that, just check out my videos on the operation of that. Very easy to use. Love it. I love on the 2000 or the 2020 and above mills, you have two sets of hydraulic levers, meaning you have two pumps. So you can operate that lever and this lever over here at the same time. You can actually operate on one series, one pump at one time, but you're essentially limiting your power. But I do like how they have two controls, especially when you're turning a log. So you can like, you know, turn the chain and lift up the turner. Uh, you can do some pretty cool two motion operations that are amazing uh really like that design and you got like it's this two stage or it's like a pump in a series so there you go you get your two hydraulic pumps that silver thing right there there's two there's one in the front one in the back and they go off the uh, drive belt the tensioner gauge i like that on timber king and i like this type of design cooks does this as well and there's a few others i believe as well but um, you have a spring system so rather than a cam gear Whenever you get into a hard spot on the log, you have some give in your spring, so your blade's not taking up that. So I like a spring system rather than a cam system for locking your blade in place. I've had a cam system before. It works and everything. It was on a smaller mill, but this spring system gives you a little bit more um, safety, if you will, for the blade. Because once you start doing a lot of cutting, you will be going through blades uh, quite regularly i mean i've gone through as many as three to four blades in a day if we're cutting some really really big sorry my phone's going off here people respond to the facebook posts but uh yeah you want you want to make sure you're maintaining a, a good blade and everything and you're not overstressing a blade um uh, typically you can get five four to five hundred board foot per blade maybe a little bit more depending on what you're cutting and then i have some videos here soon we'll have the conclusion of the carbide blade testing everything carbide blades are amazing and they can last a really really long time and especially if you know how to sharpen them they can even last longer so check out the channel more for that uh the one of the things i like so on the timber king mill this is your lever right here for going forward or reverse the thing i like is i can have one hand push this lever forward and i control my speed real time with this little uh, um, dial right here and based on if I get to a hard spot, soft spot, thin spot, wide spot, I can slow down the mill head. There's another customer going by. Yep, always us. Uh, yep, my buddy Ricky. So, yeah, cool stuff. Uh, I, I like the, the ability, the functionality of being able to control stuff. The levers themselves, I don't even have to use this anymore, but they do have all the indications of what everything does. And literally, folks, after you run the mill for any length of time, these levers are like second nature. I, I know where everything is, and it just it just comes like second nature too. Love it. Um, I like the clear fuel tank, so I can see how much fuel I have in there. It's always a big plus. Molly likes my sawdust pile, right, Molly? Molly. Huh? Yeah, sawdust. Yeah, she likes, <laughs> she's daydreaming. She likes the sawdust pile, but you always have to be careful on this side of the mill, and I don't like to cut whenever anything's over here. You can shoot out, as we talked about beforehand, you can see all these little dimples and stuff right there. That's where a blade hits. And if you have your guides removed here, because yes, this does clog up with sawdust or anything, but if you do that, I have shot saw blades out three or four feet, even more, 
uh, added this. I've heard people shooting them out quite far. It does have a little deflector right here that does kind of point it down, but as it says, stay clear. Broken blades can cause serious injury or death. That is no joko. No joko. I will say, one of the things I like on the Cook's design is they have a bar system. It's actually diagonaled like down this way, and your sawdust just flies out. I actually like that better than this knockdown system. That might be a modification we could do later, is add something, you know, cut away something here and add those big bars. I like that. I've never been able to clog up uh, the Cook's sawmill that we had. So that's, but again, every mill, there's, there's pros and cons to absolutely everything. In my opinion, the Timber King 2000 or 2020 or 2022 or 2025 or anything, they, they, they meet all the wickets that I need for my perfect mill. And this is my perfect mill. There is no other mill that I want other than this one for me. My dad has a 2220. He runs a larger operation than I do. Uh, but for ease of use, this mill is awesome. It's, it's, I wouldn't say it's small and compact, but it's smaller than my dad's mill. My dad's mill, we've modified it to cut 25 foot. That means my building would have to be, you know, four more feet longer that way. And my height, so this right here is like 11 foot. On my dad's mill, we had to make it like 12 foot. Um, and I'm, I'm close. You can see, I love this. This, is, this has been a life goal of mine. But when I crank up my sawmill, you can always tell where I crank up my sawmill. I've got a dark spot right here in the ceiling. Um, I don't know if I can show you it around this frame. But anyways, I got a dark spot on the ceiling and I actually have like a, a light line that's running down there from my exhaust. That's awesome. But I am close when I'm operating at the full height extension because you have this exhaust right here. Uh, the exhaust on this does go straight up. This one has no diesel particulate filter, none of the emission stuff in that aspect. It's just been detuned. My dad's sawmill does have the diesel particulate filter because he's running a 50 horsepower, uh, 49.8, whatever horsepower Kubota. Therefore, he has to have the uh, diesel particulate filter. No death required, but a diesel particulate filter. Um, so that's another thing. I was not big on wanting to upgrade to a 2220 for myself because I didn't want to have to have all the hassle, all the extra costs just for the uh, stuff that they had to put on the sawmill. And I will tell you this, so this sawmill right here, this 25 horse diesel will cut and has cut everything that I've put on this mill, no problem. Even that monster freaking live oak log over there, which I've been dreading cutting, this mill will have no problem cutting 26, 28 inches wide, 16 foot long live oak. My dad's mill with that 49 horsepower, I'm not gonna lie folks, it has more power than it knows what to do with. <laughs> I mean, yes, I, I think some of the sawmill companies, I was talking to someone else about this, I think they've gotten into a battle of who has the biggest, most powerful engine. Uh, my buddy has a 2520. I love that mill too. There's a few things it has that my dad's mill doesn't have. But his engine, I think he could have got by with the same engine my dad has and everything. That mill has so much power. It is so insanely powerful. It has, you know, just loads of power that you can do whatever with um, and just have loads left over. The thing I like on the, the newer mill that my dad has is it also has kind of a digital readout, but it tells you torque percentage usage. And we've never gotten my dad's over like 70, 72%, I think. It's the highest I've ever seen. And I was pushing hard on some 24-inch wide hickory. So, yeah, there's a lot of power to to uh, uh, use on those on those larger mills. This one right here, I would have to cut down, uh, slow down just a little bit on 24-inch wide hickory. But again, this thing has no issue, doesn't grunt at anything. I can throw anything on this deck, and if it'll fit on this mill, it'll cut it. With you with the sharp blade that is. So I know it's a long video, but folks, I'm telling you, in my opinion, for a small time, you know, LLC, small business, on the side kind of thing, the Timber King 2000 or the Timber King 2020 is the best mill, in my opinion. Hands down, happiest purchase, best purchase I've ever made. Um, I actually took money out of my savings account, like my IRA type account, to buy this mill. And had, I have since paid all that back in a short, short a period of time. This mill has made money, and this mill is easy to maintain, easy to operate. And it was one of the, literally the best investments I've ever made. 
So I've got nothing but great things to say about it. Maybe I'm a little bit biased, but again, I have owned seven sawmills and this is my favorite mill by far. Now here's the other thing, I'm selling this mill. <laughs> because I have another one on order. So uh, that's for logistics reasons. Uh, we're going to be moving up to Wisconsin. I'm thinking about selling it here or possibly in Tennessee. But I, I just have to, I just don't know if I can be without a mill for a short period. So there, there is a chance I could sell this when I move up to Wisconsin um, and then sell it right before winter hits because my new mill should be ready right after everything thaws up in Wisconsin. So if I don't have to saw throughout the winter and then get the mill out of it, be super cool with that so yeah we'll see i, I don't know I, I'm, I'm torn because folks this was my dream mill this is my dream mill and will always be the mill that i dream about i love this mill <laughs> all right hope you enjoyed this video that's me just rambling on about a whole lot of crap but uh i, I love this mill uh if you come out here i have people subscribers come out to the to the property here we talk about sawmills and everything and I don't want to sway you one way or the other. For me, this is my mill, and this is the mill for me. But I, again, I like cooks. I like bakers. Not a big fan of wood misers. I've, I've had them and I've had some other issues. But um, but cooks, baker, and Timber King are my top three sawmills. Uh, hope you find this interesting. We'll uh, see you around. Please like, subscribe to the channel. If you want to see more videos like this, let me know. But 400 hours. She just barely broke in.